Hi, and welcome back to Learning Python in 3 Hours. Today we're starting a new section around websites and web applications using Python. The main motivation for talking about websites and web apps is because there's a lot of things you can do with Python and it's very useful as a scripting language. But ultimately, if you want to create impact, if you want to create value, you want to present the functionality of your Python scripts or programs or applications online. Because being things being online or things being a website is the easiest way for you to deploy an application in many cases. Furthermore, there is a lot of neat things you can do, for example, generating static websites and generating websites with templates in the Python ecosystem. So in this section, we're going to look at number one, how we can generate a static website with Markdown and Pelican. So for those of you who come from, let's say, a PHP background or a marketing background, you can think of it more as, you know, how can we use Python as a very simple CMS? Core to using Python as a CMS or like a WordPress replacement is how we can template our website so that repeatable visual elements are not repeated and we are simply saving them once and including them using variables in our templates. The last thing I'm going to talk about is how we can deploy our first web server using Flask which allows us to wrap very simple APIs around either machine learning models or other applications that you might be doing with Python. In our first video into the world of web application development, we're going to talk about how we can generate a static website with Markdown and Pelican. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can generate a static site with Pelican, how we can write some content with Markdown, and changing some global variables of your Pelican site. Let's take a look. If you haven't already, please install Pelican. It's very easy. All you need to do is do pip install Pelican and the same thing with Markdown. When we first use Pelican, we can use to use the Pelican skeleton generator to create a basic structure around your website. So what we do is we first call Pelican quick start. So there's a bunch of stuff we want to do. So let's say learn Python. Author of this website is Rudy. English. No. 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 After you've ran Pelican Quick Start, your directory structure should look like this. We have content as a folder with outputs as a folder. And with the configuration of Pelican and the publishing configurations in these two files respectively. Now let's look at how we can use Markdown to create some content which will be transformed into pages in Pelican. I'm back in my Pelican tutorial folder under the Python folder which contains all the code that comes with this course in my Atom text editor. I'm going to create a new file under content called first post and we're going to post fix it with the file extension md to signify that it's a markdown file. It's very easy in Pelican to create content. All we need to do is say title my first post. We say date 2018 and then let's say we'll publish it at noon and then category general. Hello world from Pelican. And that's all there is to it. So what we've done here is using Markdown, we have created some attributes for this post and we've created the contents of the post as plain text. Now Markdown is a very useful language for both programming and creating readmes and stuff. You can look at articles and tutorials online to investigate more about Markdown. So we're saving this Markdown file and so this is what the project directory should look like after you've saved our first post. After we've generated our first post in Markdown, what we need to do is run the pelican command. 
you can see the Pelican detected that we have one article with zero drafts and zero pages. I'm going to process this. So the next thing to do is to navigate to our folder in Firefox to see how this has generated our new website. So we're here in Firefox and we can see that in the contents we have our first post.md and in outputs we have all the files that are neatly generated by Pelican. Let's click index.html to see how the static site is coming along. Great, so you can see that our title of the blog has successfully been incorporated in the template. And then because we have a post, it says my first post, hello world from Pelican. And you can also see that all of these things are templated. And we can see that the author has been successfully incorporated in this. The last thing is notice that there are footer links here where it says you can modify these links in your config file or you can add links in your social section by modifying your config file. So let's take a look at what the config file looks like. The config file in question is pelicanconf.py under your project folder. And you can see that we have the author, we have a site name, so we can change learn Python three hours. And we can also create new links where we can say, for example, BBC and then HTTP bbc.co.uk. After we've changed the configuration, what we need to do is to rerun Pelican so the static site can be regenerated. Let's see how that works. I just ran the Pelican command and you can see that the title of the blog is now learn Python three hours because I've changed it in the config file. We've also successfully added a, B a link to BBC in the links section. We've just learned how to generate a static site with the Python package Pelican and to write some contents with Markdown. We then talked about how we can change global variables in the footer so that we can save variables that affect the whole website once and then use it everywhere within the website.